When you hear news outlets, uh, mostly citing anonymous sources, threatening about the risk to the country if uh, this, uh, these, these uh, provisions do not remain, what do you hear? Uh, because I sometimes worry uh, that we encourage people to be more afraid than they should be by repeating these talking points from administration officials. Well, American media outlets should really be ashamed of themselves the way they do that. I mean, supposedly the lesson that large American media outlets learned from their role in selling the Iraq war to, the, to the public was, oh, we're not going to allow government officials to propagandize the public any longer by giving them anonymity whenever they ask for it. We're going to make them put their names on things and therefore be held accountable. And yet this all turned out to be a complete scam. If you turn on any major cable network, including the one we're on, unfortunately, or read any large newspaper and American newspaper, you constantly see reporters giving anonymity to the people they're supposedly serving as watchdogs over in order to scare the public. And that New York Times article that you referenced that gave anonymity to Obama officials to say nothing other than you're playing Russian roulette with national security if you're one of our critics on the Patriot Act was disgraceful. It was the kind of reporting that got Judy Miller fired and yet they continue to do it. Well, and yet some officials have said it on the record. Loretta Lynch, for example, has made very severe statements about what could happen without this, these provisions of the Patriot Act. Are we not supposed to report what they say when they're on the record? No, of course, on the record should absolutely be reported, and then there should be reporting that goes along with it from people who dispute that or from facts that undermine it. I mean, here's the thing, Brian, you know, you so have your point these is, Obama your, officials your point who are is, saying... One of the quotes from her was, will you will be less safe. That was one of her quotes. I think what you're saying is there should be follow-up when, in fact, uh, you know, something expires and the country's not less safe. Right. I mean, the Obama administration put together a panel to ask this panel of experts who had access to classified information are these metadata domestic spying programs keeping us safe? And their own panel concluded that there has not been a single terrorist attack stopped by this program. So now allow Obama officials to go around the country saying, you're going to die at the hands of ISIS and Al-Qaeda if we can't spy on you, without noting that all the evidence negates that, I think, is irresponsible. It's, it's stenography journalism. Boom. Absolutely nailed it. It is stenography journalism. And the thing about stenography journalism is that it's not really journalism. You're just being a stenographer to people in power. So you might as well hand over your sheet of paper or your laptop or whatever you're writing on to a government official and say, here, do your own propaganda. You don't just report what they say and you don't report it as a 50-50 thing. You do your goddamn job and you fact check it and then you write the article with the truth in there and the central message being the truth. So again, I go a step further than Glenn Greenwald here. Because Glenn Greenwald is saying, well, yes, you run what Loretta Lynch says, and then you run things that are critical of it. No, but I don't even like the idea of presenting it as a 50-50 thing. Here's what she says, here's what other people say. If she's wrong, you have to say, it's incumbent upon you if you're a journalist to say, this person is factually incorrect, and I'm going to explain why. And, by the way, what this person believes is unconstitutional. That's another thing. The media uh, apparently forgets that you're allowed to draw hard lines in political discussions. There are some things that are not debatable because we've already come to a conclusion. If somebody starts debating segregation again, will the media run articles saying, you know, some people are for it, some people are against it? Or will there be articles with moral indignation and outrage saying, these people are fucking idiots and look at what side they're taking. Pro-segregation? Let's all mock them and say how ridiculous they are and say how outside of the spectrum of what should be allowed they are. Well, it's the same thing when people argue for bring back the programs that spy on everybody and their mother and don't have any real protections in place and haven't stopped a single terrorist attack. Your job as the media, yes, objective media sources, not just progressive outlets, your job is to go, <laughs> that's so stupid, you're so dumb, We're, we should all get you out of power. That should be the response. And I don't think that's opinion journalism. I don't think that's, you know, reserved for talk radio or internet outlets like myself. I think that's something that if you're doing real journalism, that's how you respond. Because we have a constitution that exists and it says stuff and it means something. And your job is to say what they said is illegal and unconstitutional. And here's the proof. Hey, what they said is not true. They say this stops terrorism. It doesn't. We know it doesn't. Here's the proof. You have to fact check it all, but unfortunately in the media environment today, we don't even do, on certain issues, we don't even do the 50-50 thing anymore. On certain issues, they just report, uh, you know, either anonymous sources or they name the source to do government propaganda, and then they leave it at that. Hey, the certain provisions of the NSA uh, of uh, the Patriot Act expiring, well, 
this is going to endanger the nation. They write it and then they'll write a whole article about that without saying it's false, without questioning it. They just write an article about that. Well, that's no different than fucking Kafka. That's no different than the North Korean state news agency. The whole purpose of government propaganda in those cases is the government propaganda. Here, it might even be worse in the sense that you have private, supposedly private corporations and media outlets that have the guise of respectability, and then they do the exact same government talking points that happen in the other nations. And at least in the other nations, you know what the fuck you're getting. At least when it was Kafka, at least if it's some authoritarian country, you know because it says at the top of the page it's from the government. In America, it has the veil of respectability because you slap CNN on there and you say exactly what the government wants you to say. It's pathetic, and it's the same kind of reporting that got us into Iraq in the first place.